I literally sat up in bed in the middle of the night because I had an idea for this. This cylinder, the intention with it is all carried around on my welding truck. I already do, just for, you know, pulling and pushing operations. But is what I was thinking about was by putting this plate on here, I would like to make an adapter so I could use these bearing splitters. Make it so it hooks up to these things. Um, this press here will come out of here and you use these rods over here, there's different lengths and they screw into these uh, bearing splitters and you have a portable unit that way and so I was going to make this plate on here with several different threaded holes at different locations um, so I could put these rods in it and use this and then it dawned on me that I really just need to copy this part and then not only could I use that cylinder on these as a portable unit but I could actually put that cylinder up in here on this press when I wanted to and that would take a lot of well pressure off of me for getting the big press done for right now so that's what I'm going to try doing right now is figuring out if I can get it get that cylinder rigged up to mount in here um, this press is stamped on the side 17 and a half ton and if you look at a four inch cylinder um, on the pressure uh, you're going to achieve about 18 tons out of it somewhere in there so we're right in the range you know that's that's a perfect match for in here this is the concept so I'm just looking around for materials I took a bunch of measurements on this trying to figure out exactly how I want to set it in there and what I want to do and so yep that's what I'm doing right now is just thinking basically that hole looked a little bit big so I went and measured it and sure enough it's three quarters instead of five eighths I grabbed the wrong dang drill bit ah I guess I cut me out a new chunk of metal because that yeah I just can't put a washer on that yep 
moved right away. I really need another one of these big Bessie clamps like this. I got a couple smaller ones, but another one of those big ones would be really, really nice. Someday. Those things are expensive, but they are worth it. I love that Bessie brand. So I'll see if I can figure out how to get my big C clamp hooked on there. I don't know if I have to flip flop things around, but one way or another. Alright. Okay, let's see if that works. Doesn't look very good on the inch and a quarter bit. Let's see if it works all right. Oh, that moved the whole table. It's a little loose. Ah, yeah. I only had the top one clamped, and that wasn't clamped tight. bad. Took longer than I thought it would, but I was trying to go easy on it. <sighs> Probably should have taken the time and touch up that bit before I did that hole too. I don't know. It's hard to tell because that split line in there really will cause fits. So I don't know. It felt like it was drilling pretty good. I wasn't, I didn't have much down pressure on it. So... Anyway, let's go clean that up and then we'll see if it fits onto the cylinder. Well, a little bit off on my distance that way. Um, these go in, but then I can't get this one to do more than like two or three threads and it tightens up. And the same way on this side. So, um, oh, actually that one's going now. Well, that's interesting. Uh, it binds up. Yep, there it goes. Binds up again. So, it's really, really close. I think I'll just take the reamer and go through the holes real quick and see if that doesn't help. They definitely need to be reamed out. That one is, like, really hard. It won't slide in out without turning it. So, see what the reamer does. Wow, I won't even start. Alright, back that off a little bit. Whee! Not very steady. Let's back it off a little more. taking off that much. I must really have a low spot in it. Just 
Still taking off an inch, huh? Oh, man. Can't believe that. Oh, yeah, that's far from a round hole. My word. Anyway, I'll keep playing with that till I get it. The second hole went really fast, but much easier. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. They both will screw right in, no problem now. Right, these will hang in here. And then the bearing splitter goes on down here. And that'll give me a portable unit that way. And then I will drill a couple holes in up here that match this hole pattern. So I can bolt it on the top of this thing if I want to use it here in the shop. That means I can even use these caps for uh, transfer punching. I can set them on there and transfer punch. That way the width will be right. Just gotta get this length right. Thought I'd show you something else that's neat about this press while it was on my mind. This thing came with one of those inside pullers, you know, for like a bushing or possibly even a seal. Probably wouldn't need this press to pull out a seal, but anyway, like a bushing or something, you can get in there and grip on it. Uh, it took me forever to figure out how to use it. Kind of one of those, oh, duh moments, because I was like, well, how do you stick that on here and use the press and pull with it? Because it only pushes. It's one-way hydraulic spring return. And then it dawned on me one day, like I said, in a complete, oh, duh moment, take this handle off up here, because that's threaded too. Flip the thing upside down. And now when you pump it, it pulls up. So that's really cool. It's hard to clamp stuff down. I haven't figured out a good way to, you know, really get stuff clamped down on the table. It's not a big deal though. You know, it's just one of those little things like, ah, but it's nice. It's, it's a feature I seldom use, but I tell you what, when you need it, it's useful. And that'll be the other thing about using an actual hydraulic cylinder like this is I'll be able to pull up too. And that will be very nice at times, too. All right, back to the build. And more of this. Yeah, I've been to town since I last, uh, oh, she stapled that shut. Interesting. Anyway, need a couple nine volt batteries for my testers, but I bought some uh, 5 8 fine thread bolts <sighs> and I now remember why I don't have many of them in stock. These things are insanely expensive. $26 right there just for the bolts. Oh my. Hey, the furnace finally shut off. So, oh, got to plug in my hoist. Trouble with using an electric one, has to have power. Uh, okay. Oh, you know what? I didn't ream out those holes. But that's not going to fit in there very well. All right. I'm gonna ream those out. Well, actually, you know what? Never mind. All right, back and forth, back and forth. Um, yeah, let's see if they're in the right place before we get all excited about reaming them. Oh yeah. Question is. Yes. All right. See if I can get that back off of there. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna bind up. Alright, well, I will fight with that. 
ream that out and then next we will work on the spacers figure out exactly what I'm doing there cut out two pieces that are two and a half square one inch thick they can go right in there or I can flip this up and put them under there uh, gain another inch if I need to in the press <sighs> I want to see if there's flex in this strap iron. The camera will show that really well if there is any. It'll exaggerate it. I want to make a mistake, get your finger in there. something with this press so I'll, I'll go look around see if I have anything that I can broach real quick I looked around real quick and found that piece of metal that I tested the inch and a half drill bit on the Rockford lathe um, off camera I actually went and faced that side after I got done boring it so yeah I'm gonna try that uh, I'm just going to do one pass on it, not make an actual full-on brooch. Need to make a make something up to do that a little bit better, but hey, that's a heck of a lot faster than hand cranking it, hand pumping it, whatever you call it. All right. Well, start of a brooch there. First pass. That's pretty exciting. Uh, that was very easy. Just moving the levers, all I had to do. That was nice. I'm going to enjoy that a lot.